Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. I'm Meg with Truby, the online English education school that makes learning easy and enjoyable. If you're new here, we're super excited to have you. And if you're already part of our family, welcome back. Today, we've got something very exciting for you. Lesson five of our ASVAB series, Mechanical Comprehension. We're going to break down some fundamental mechanical principles, spatial reasoning, and practice problems that will help you understand the basics and ace your test. But before we dive in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on our future lessons. We post new videos regularly and trust me, you'll want to stay tuned. Also, if you're looking to improve your language skills, check out our Instagram and Facebook page along with our TikTok. We offer a bunch of daily English tips there. And if you're already part of our community on those platforms, welcome back as well. And lastly, in addition to that, we offer online remote video learning classes that are live with our teachers. We offer many different languages so you can become bilingual, trilingual, or even a polyglot. All right, links are in the description below. Let's get started with today's lesson. Section one is basic mechanics. All right, so let's kick things off with the basics. Mechanical comprehension is all about understanding how things work, whether it's machines, tools, or even simple everyday objects. We'll start with three key concepts, levers, pulleys, and gears. Let's begin with levers. A lever is a simple machine that makes it easier to lift heavy objects. Imagine a seesaw, that's a lever. A lever has three parts, the fulcrum, which is the part where the lever pivots or balances, the effort, this is the force you apply to move the lever, and the load, this is the object you're trying to lift. Think of the seesaw again. If you're sitting on one side and your friend is on the other, the middle of the seesaw is the fulcrum. When you push down the effort, your friend goes, up the load the closer the fulcrum is to the load the harder it is to lift but the further away it is the easier it becomes now on to pulleys a pulley is another simple machine that helps lift heavy objects it's like a wheel with a rope or a chain running through it by using a pulley you can change the direction of your force making lifting even easier here's the picture i want you to think about Imagine you're trying to pull up a heavy bucket from a well. By attaching a rope to a pulley, you can pull down the rope instead of lifting the bucket up, like this. Gears are a bit like teeth that mesh together to move things. They're super useful in machines like cars or clocks. When one gear turns, it makes the other gear turn too. The size of the gear affects how fast or slow something moves. Smaller gears turn faster, while larger gears turn slower but with more force. So these are the basics, levers, pulleys, and gears. All of these three things help us lift, move, and do work more efficiently. With your ASVAB exam, these are the three main areas that I want you to focus on for mechanical comprehension. Honestly, when I took the ASVAB test, I think these were the only three things that I had to be tested on, which was great because I hadn't practiced this since high school, but it is things that kind of come back to you with some review, just like on this video. All right, now we're gonna move on to our second section, spatial reasoning. Now that we've covered all these basics of levers, pulleys, and gears, let's talk about spatial reasoning. This is the ability to visualize and understand how objects relate to each other within a three-dimensional space. It's really, really important when it comes to mechanical comprehension because you'll need to imagine how things move and fit together. So here's an example for you. Think about a box. If I give you a flat image of the box and ask you what it would look like if you turned it around, you'll need to visualize it in your mind. You might picture the sides, the top, the bottom in different orientations. This is spatial reasoning in action. To help you practice this spatial reasoning, try puzzle games and games that make you think about shapes and how they fit together. You can also practice by drawing objects from different angles because the more you practice visualizing something, the better you'll get at understanding how things work in the real world. This is just like visualizing your own success. Visualize yourself getting a great score on the ASVAB and honestly, you're probably gonna get it. So I highly recommend that you practice with your visualization skills. All right, and now we're moving on to our third section, practice problems. Now that we have the basics down of mechanics and spatial reasoning, let's do some practice problems together. 
Ready? Our first problem. A lever has a fulcrum located two feet from the load. If the effort is applied four feet from the fulcrum, what happens to the effort needed to lift the load? I want you to think about that for a second. And do you remember perhaps our seesaw example? The closer the fulcrum is to the load, the more difficult it is to lift. But when the effort is farther away, it becomes easier. So in this case, since the effort is four feet away from the fulcrum, it will be easier to lift the load compared to if the effort were closer to the fulcrum. All right, on to problem two. Imagine a pulley system with two pulleys. If you pull on the rope with 10 pounds of force, how much force is needed to lift the load? In a system with two pulleys, you get a mechanical advantage because the force is distributed. So think more pulleys, more advantage, easier work. So you would need less force to lift the load with two pulleys. In this case, if the mechanical advantage is two from the two pulleys, you would only need five pounds of force to lift the load. Simple, right? I hope you're also paying attention to your screen as I'm talking. You're not just listening on a podcast style because you're able to see these problems written out on your screen with some nice diagrams and examples. Now for our third problem. Look at this gear system. If the smaller gear is turning clockwise, in which direction will the larger gear turn? Remember, gears turn in opposite directions. So if the small gear is turning clockwise, the larger gear will turn counterclockwise. This is a fundamental rule when working with gears. Just remember for your test, if you have two gears, they will be turning into each other, just like that. All right, our next question is regarding another pulley system. These questions that are going on now throughout the rest of this video, so the next three questions, they're gonna be much more difficult. They're a bit more in depth. So let's really get into it. The first one of this difficult series is a pulley system consists of two fixed pulleys and a movable pulley. You apply a force of 100 newtons to lift a 200 newton load. How much force would be required to lift the load if the system had only one fixed pulley? No movable pulleys. Here are your options on the screen. You have A, 100 newtons, B, 200 newtons, C, 50 newtons, or D, 400 newtons. I want you to keep in mind that the N is the unit for this one, and that stands for newtons, which is a unit of force. I believe we reviewed that in our third ASVAB video. So, with only one fixed pulley, the force required to lift the load is equal to the weight of the load. Therefore, 200 newtons of force is required. So your answer is B, 200 newtons. All right. Let's move on to our next question here. And as always, if you guys have any questions about any of this, drop them in the comments below. So our next question, lever and load. In a first class lever, the fulcrum is located between the effort, force applied, and the load, which is the resistance. If the effort is applied three feet from the fulcrum and the load is six feet from the fulcrum, how much effort is required to lift a 60 pound load? With this one, I don't want you to worry too much about what a first class lever is, that in-depth nitty gritty stuff. For this video, we're just getting you the broad understanding so you're able to do very well on your ASVAB without having to go super in depth. So anyways, let's go through. Here's your potential answers on the screen. You have A, 10 pounds, B, 15 pounds, C, 20 pounds, and D, 30 pounds. So with this one, before I tell you the answer, let me explain why. The mechanical advantage of a lever is calculated a specific way. It's calculated by dividing the distance from the fulcrum to the load. In this case, the mechanical advantage is six divided by three, which is two. So the effort required is 60 pounds divided by two, which equals 30 pounds. All right, moving on to our third question. It's gear ratios. So two gears are meshed together. Gear A has 12 teeth and gear B has 36 teeth. If gear A rotates once, how many times will gear B rotate? A, one time, B, three times, C, four times, or D, 12 times. Well, this one is interesting. Number one thing about gears to remember, if you remember me telling you this, is that you have to understand gears turn counterclockwise. So one turns this way, the other one turns the opposite way. 
So the answer is D, 12 times, but let me explain why. The gear ratio is determined by dividing the specific number of teeth in the larger gear by the number of teeth in the smaller gear. In this specific case, the ratio is 36 divided by 12, which equals 3. Since gear A only turns one time, gear B will turn one third of a time, and thus gear B will rotate 12 times for every one full rotation of gear A. So, if you find yourself still struggling with these specific mechanical comprehension ASVAB prep questions, I highly recommend you join us for a month of prep. We do online remote video Zoom call classes. We can prepare you completely for your ASVAB exam and we can almost guarantee that you're going to get a better score than what you would have gotten before you even worked with us. We go through all seven major parts of the ASVAB test, including English comprehension, paragraph comprehension, science, math, mechanical comprehension, and much more. We make sure that you're copacetic and understanding all the different parts so you're able to get that military career position that you really want. Your test score decides what job you're able to get in the military, so the better you score, the more job options you have. So you don't want to get a 17 on your test or a 30 on your test. You want to be getting at least an 80 or a 90, so then all the career paths are open for you. You could be a fighter pilot, you could be a chemical engineer, or you could be a public affairs officer. Anything that you're interested in, there are tons of jobs in the military. It's a great career path, but we got to start somewhere, and that is with the ASVAB exam. So guys, that's it for today's lesson. We hope that you enjoyed learning all about basic mechanics, spatial reasoning, and practice problems. I know you have to learn it, and you know you have to learn it, so even if it's not for you, keep watching videos like this. Don't forget to like this video if it helped you and hit subscribe for more lessons just like this one. And if you want to improve your language skills, be sure to check out our online classes at truev.org. No www. They're a very fun way to boost your learning and improve your brain power. Learning another language makes you super cool as well. So make sure you follow us on all our other social media outlets to stay connected with us and get daily English tips and other language tips. All of the links are in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time with more tips and tricks to help you succeed. Keep learning, keep growing. You've got this and with us, you can really find your voice. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.